England is the home to many well-known criminals, but few evoke as much fear and respect as this man. A true mastermind that expanded his smuggling business worldwide. His tentacles reached from the UK to Europe, South America, Asia, Russia, and even the Emirates. If you'd screw him over, he would retaliate in unimaginable ways. The Netherlands is still in shock for what he did over there, and to my total surprise, one of the biggest Dutch criminals at the time worked closely together with him. This is the story of Robert Dawes. Robert Dawes was born in 1972 and grew up in Sutton and Ashfield, Nottinghamshire. The start of his story is quite typical. At a young age, he would get himself involved in petty crimes. It did not help that he came from a notorious crime family that focused on smuggling and selling substances. He started doing robberies which were not really all that lucrative, and it also landed him in jail two times at age 20 and 22. It was time to move on to bigger things, things that would make him way more money than a simple robbery ever could. Early 1997, he decided it was time to go big and stepped into the game of smuggling and selling substances himself. This was not without success. In as short as four years, Robert managed to get extremely well connected with criminal organizations in Spain and the Netherlands. In 2001, he allegedly sold 50 to 100 kilos of substances weekly. Money was pouring in, and although still unknown to the UK police, Robert decided it was best to move out of the country. He would settle in the Costa del Sol. Why not spend your time and money in a sunny place instead of in cold and rainy England, right? 2001 was also the year UK police started their investigation into a criminal organization out of Nottinghamshire. They had gotten various tips and noticed several things that got their interest. So, they decided to conduct further research. This research led to the arrest of several members of Robert's organization, of which his own brother, John, and father, Arthur. Two years later, John was sentenced to 24 years in prison and Arthur to eight years in prison. They received quite long sentences after being found guilty of laundering millions of money and being part of an organization that was deemed ruthless and very dangerous. With his brother and father locked up, Robert doubled down and scaled the business to new heights. It is said that he did business from Europe to South America, Asia, Russia, and the Middle East. One of his business partners in the Netherlands is a familiar face if you've been following my channel. Robert did a lot of business with Gwyneth Martha. Gwyneth Martha was a rising star in the underworld of Amsterdam and was active in the production of ecstasy pills at the time. Gwyneth and Robert would go on to produce pills together. Someone who worked for Robert said that he'd produced the pills for 18 cents a piece and sold them for three euros. You do the math. Seems like a very lucrative business considering that they sold hundreds of thousands of pills per week. On May 26, 2001, Robert sent one of his men called Anthony Cyril Spencer to Amsterdam to solve an issue with another criminal named David Royal. A shipment was still unpaid and Robert wanted to see his money. During the meeting, something happened and a gunfight erupted. Anthony and David were both firing their weapons and hit each other. Anthony survived, David did not. Robert was pissed that it went wrong, but the message was clear. Robert never hesitated to send his people to deliver a message to someone. To my surprise, Gwyneth Martha was also involved in the following case. The case of a Dutch teacher named Gerard Meesters. In the summer of August 2002, Gerard met up with his sister Jeanette, who flew in from Spain to attend their mother's funeral. Gerard overheard his sister talk on the phone to someone called Madeline about a big hit, and went on to talk about a seized shipment. Gerard thought his sister was involved in human trafficking or some sort and confronted her. Jeanette refused to tell Gerard what she was talking about, after which Gerard told her that whatever she was involved in could be the end for her. Little did he know. A month later, Gerard was in Salut and tried to salvage the relationship with his sister. She sounded stressed and said that she could not meet because she was not able to leave. Gerard had a bad feeling about this, but could not do anything, so he let it go. Three months later, Gerard was watching TV with his son when the doorbell rang. He opened the door without looking and was totally shocked when five men entered the home. Three of those men are now quite familiar faces of the Amsterdam underworld. It was Gwyneth Martha, his nephew Denise Mongan, and Etus Belsrang. The two other men were Stephen B. and Daniel Sowerby, both from England. The men asked Gerard where his sister was. Gerard did not have a clue where she was, to which one of the men shoved a paper in his hands with a Spanish phone number written on it. They kindly, yet forcefully, told him to find out and give them a call once he did. 
If he did not, they would come back, but not to talk. Gerard called the police, but to no avail. The family decided to spend the night elsewhere. He gave the phone number a call, but the person on the other end did not want to give any insight into who he was. After a brief argument, Gerard hung up. He truly had no idea where his sister was. Four days later, the bell rang again. Herard opened the door and was immediately riddled with eight bullets. At that moment, no one knew why Herard had to go. He was an innocent teacher and did not have any debts or problems with anyone. Upon further investigation, it became clear. He was hit in order of an English crime organization, that of Robert Dawes. His sister Jeanette had allegedly stolen 1,500 kilos of cannabis and was untraceable. So Robert asked for a favor to get rid of innocent Herard as a message to Jeanette. A very tragic message. Three weeks after what happened to Herard, the mother of a woman named Madeline received a letter with cutout of the news article about the hit on Herard, accompanied by the text, Maddie, contact us. Who is Madeline? Well, Madeline was the woman Jeanette was talking to and thus most likely also involved in the missing cannabis. It truly goes to show how relentless Robert was. Did you think Robert went too far? Let me know in the comments. On the 8th of December, 2003, Robert's men, Stephen and Daniel, were arrested in the Netherlands. Police found 16 kilos of coke, a weapon, and a notepad in their house. This notepad contained information about ammunition, the same ammunition that was used for Herard. The notepad also contained Gwinnett Martha's number with the nickname Blackie, and Robert Dawes' number with the nickname The Derby Man. Both men have always refused to say who ordered the hit for fear of reprisals against their own families in the UK. They obviously knew firsthand what Robert was capable of. Business went on as usual for Robert. He would become one of the early pioneers to use Dubai as a hideout. Attracted by the non-extradition, lack of financial rules, international importance, and of course, the luxury lifestyle. Robert set up shop there and lived as a king of his smuggling proceeds. Robert was truly a businessman in that sense. He made the right decisions and was ahead of his time. He also discovered the Hawala secret banking system that was thriving in Dubai. The Hawala banking system was one of the easiest ways to launder and move money across the world without a paper trail. In early 2007, the Spanish Guardia Civil received information that Robert was the link between English smuggling organizations and the Colombian coke cartels. He connected supply and demand while also still bringing in large shipments himself. Then. In March 2007, 200 kilos worth of coke were seized in Madrid that could be linked to Robert as well. As the search for him had already intensified in the background, Spanish police forces now went full on. They wanted Robert as soon as possible. Shortly after the seized shipment in Madrid, Interpol officially released their red notice for Robert, which meant that law enforcement worldwide were requested to locate, arrest, and extradite him. In June 2008, Robert was arrested in his luxury villa in Dubai. You'd think that it would be game over. However, he did something very clever. Robert got himself arrested on purpose and utilized a law in the UAE that stated that if a check bounced, the person that issued it would receive a mandatory three years prison sentence. This sentence would take precedence over any outstanding requests for extradition. With this play, Robert guaranteed himself that he would not be extradited for the next three years and thus gave himself three years time to think and plan his next move. He used these three years in a Dubai cell to full effect. Dubai's prisons are usually known to be extremely harsh, but not for Robert. Robert was living a very comfortable life in a cell. He was not in some crowded and dirty cell. Robert ate good, slept comfortably, and more importantly, was able to keep his business running as he had a phone in his cell. He allegedly bribed someone with authority. Spanish police frequently asked Dubai authorities when Robert would be released so that they could arrest him next. Dubai's authorities, in their turn, were never willing to tell them, and all of a sudden, released him secretly in 2011. It was not until British authorities intervened that he was arrested again days after his release. Robert was extradited to Spain to be prosecuted for the seized shipment in Madrid. However, by the time the case came to court in Madrid, suddenly, Several crucial pieces of evidence that were seized in Dubai were lost and the case collapsed. Roberts was a free man again and did not hesitate to ramp up his business again. He would go on to set up new lines and made many more millions. However, authorities caught up once more with Robert in the end of 2015 in his villa in Ben Almadena on the Spanish Costa del Sol. His arrest was the result of a seized shipment in the French airport Charles de Gaulle in 2013. 1,300 kilos of coke worth an estimated 200 million euros 
was stuffed in 30 suitcases that travelled from Venezuela to Paris and were linked to Robert. This seizure led to French authorities to go after Robert. He is now looking to serve more than 20 years in prison in France and most likely will not have it as good in there as he did in Dubai. Despite not being prosecuted for the Gerard Maestros case back in 2002, Robert was interrogated about his share in the attack after Gerard's son opened a new case in 2017. He wants the orchestrator of his father's passing to be prosecuted after all these years. It is unknown how that case will proceed as he is serving more than 20 years in France first. Starting small in the UK, Robert grew to become an internationally connected drug kingpin. In his heydays, he earned millions every week and lived a lavish life. Unfortunately for him, it caught up with him. And by the looks of it, he will have a long future ahead of him in prison. It makes you think, why did he not just retire after his prison time in Dubai? As always, please leave a like, a comment sharing your thoughts, and subscribe if you have not already. See you in the next one.